Grandma Barbara was always one of the sweetest people that I ever knew. Well, maybe she went to Tillamook, hang out, hung out at the Navy base, and did the jitterbug because she was on something like a rum springer, which is an Amish right. term. There is just something really special about telling family stories in the places where they happened. Grandma Barbara and my grandfather, Fred Zito, met each other here. If you haven't seen the first two videos of Exploring My Roots, you should check those out. In those two videos, I was on a road trip with my dad, seeing how he grew up and a little bit of our ancestry on that side of the family. Well, now it's my mom's turn. Okay. In those first two videos, we got a sense of family history on my dad's side. When generations of farm life came to an end. In this video and the next, we get a sense of small town America and how my mom's side of the family lived their lives. Preserving family history like this is pretty special, but the real treasure for me right now is getting to see my parents kind of become little kids again as they tell stories from their childhood. We're in Monmouth, Oregon, where she grew up, and this house was built by my grandfather. One of the houses that was built by my grandfather. And this tree, of course, was tiny because that was like over 70 years ago. <laughs> wow. <laughs> this is one of three houses that my dad built um, on Craven Street. This All is, on the same street? Yes. This he is, just kept moving from block to block. Correct. Okay, okay. This is North Craven, and we'll be going to South Craven to see the other ones. We'll talk more about family, of course, as the video goes along. Right. But uh, Fred Zito, my grandfather on my dad's, on my mom's side, was in the lumber industry. And obviously, he probably got a good deal when he's building his own houses on lumber. I'm sure he did. <laughs> <laughs> One way or the other. All right. Let's go see some of the other houses. Okay. So we just drove down Craven Street a little ways. We're now in front of the last house that my grandfather built. Uh -huh. And mom has a, an interesting story that involves what used to be open fields over there and is now houses. That's where I kept my horse. When I was 12, my dad said mom had something so nice to tell us. The announcement was, the big surprise was mom was going to have a baby. Oh, and Let's, somebody wants in. <laughs> Hold on a second. I'm going to let him okay, know. Okay, that's going. off, right? It's still going right now, but we're okay. 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 Hello, sorry. No, you're good. My grandfather built this house. I've got a YouTube channel. We're just doing a quick thing with my mom, a little family history. Just wanted oh, to let right you know on. what we're doing. Oh, hey, you're right on, no problem. All right, well, thanks. <laughs> hey, yeah, by the way. Oh, uh, of course, by the way. Jordan, Brian. Brian? Yeah. Uh, say, hey, good work for your grandfather. Me and my two daughters love it, so. <laughs> <laughs> nice, <laughs> nice. Well, we have no complaints. It's fantastic for our family. So. All right, great. That's great. All right, have awesome. a wonderful day. Thank you. Too. you. It's going. Okay, so dad one night at dinner said that they had a big announcement, and we were getting excited because we didn't know what it was. Well, it ended up that mom was going to have a baby. Well, being a teenager, I go, well, I'd rather have a horse. And of course, it made my mom cry, and I felt really bad. So I did get my horse, in fact, two, but then I did get a sister who's 13 years younger than me. And she's my best friend. That was the first one that Dad built. Oh, really? With this white house here? Okay. I didn't realize that. And see, that was right across from Grandma and Grandpa. Okay. Okay, so, so this was the house, the first house that, that my grandfather built. And it's right across the street from, from where the grandparents lived, her grandparents, my great-grandparents. This was on Fred's side or Barbara's side? Barbara's side. Barbara's side. 
yeah, everything's a little overgrown here right now. Kind of hard to see the house with all the bamboo and large shrubs, but uh, these grandparents for you, great grandparents for me. Right. They, he was like a, a house painter. Is that he right? was, yeah. His trade was house painting and wallpapering, okay. and then his son Lloyd ended up um, sort of being a partner and doing the same thing. Mm -hmm. Well. Obviously, on my dad's side, there was a lot more rural farming involved. On my mom's side, I think she grew up a little bit more like I did in sort of a, you know, suburbs kind of a kind of a situation. If you can have a suburbs in Monmouth, it's sm smaller <laughs> town. I, but uh, one yeah. thing about Monmouth too, it was a dry town until just maybe two or three years ago. Mm. So, and the college is there, which has changed names few times. Yeah, this is a college town and we've got another story about that. So where this house is used to be just grandma and grandpa's garden and I think it was like a half an acre or something like that and they grew everything. So it's now it's just all built up. There's a story behind why my mom had two horses. Her first horse was named Pueblo and he had kind of a mean disposition, and particularly towards men. My mom was the only one who could ride this horse besides her grandmother. One day, Pueblo did act up to my mom, backed her into the fence, and bit her. My mom's grandfather, who remember just lived right across the street, took care of business. That horse was never seen again after that. Mom's second horse was named Star. He was older and had a much sweeter disposition. We're here on the campus of Western Oregon University. I went to college here. Back then it was called Western Oregon State College. Since then they built a, ni a nicer library and changed their name. But they've changed their name before. Originally this school was called the Normal School because that's what they called schools that taught teachers how to teach. Mom actually walked here to school as a, how, until how old, how many grades? Um, until the eighth grade. Until the eighth grade. Mm -hmm. So she would walk here to this building. And uh, any, any special memories? Well, it was funny because um, we were on the campus of the college, but we, I felt like we were teaching the teachers how to put up the students, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. But anyway, um, my principal was Mr. Wagner, and my best friend at that time was Ellen Wagner, which was his daughter. So I have a lot of memories with that. And then in the fourth grade, my teacher, Miss Perry, she ended up being Teacher of the Year. For like the state? For or? the whole United States. Oh, for the whole country. And so our class got to vote to see who would go to Washington, D.C. with her to see President Eisenhower. Oh, my goodness. And I came in second. And so I was hoping that that gal would get sick, <laughs> which wasn't very nice. <laughs> <laughs> that would have been a cool memory, though, I wouldn't know. it? Oh, man. But I did get to be on the cover of Life magazine with You're my teacher. You're kidding, really? Yeah, I still have that. Oh, my gosh. I'm going to have to get You'll a have picture to get of that. I'm going to have to try and put that in the video if I can. Okay. That's kind of cool. I will be able to get it when I go over there in two weeks. Yeah. Oh, so. one more, uh, one more item quick thought on the normal school. When I went to college here, our student newspaper was called the Lamron, because that's normal spelled backwards. Oh. Yeah. Since when I was here, they changed that name to the Western Star. I have no idea what it's called now, but... Well, supposedly yeah. my grandmother went here when it was Oregon Normal School. That's that's what it actually... I'm sorry, Oregon Normal School, not the normal school. Yeah. yeah. And then, when my mom went here for one year, it was called OCE, I believe, Oregon, Oregon College, College of, of Education. Education. Yeah. So yeah. it has changed names over the years. Yeah. So hard to keep track. <laughs> <laughs> but Brian was the only one that graduated, so 
Yay for Brian. <laughs> <laughs> well, Mom got out of the eighth grade, I'm sure. You graduated that at least. Well, that, yeah. Okay, okay. Right. So this is where I spent a whole lot of time. This is the art department. I was an art major. A lot of memories. The building is closed, unfortunately, so I couldn't go inside. We're between semesters, I guess, so it's a little quieter right now on campus. But just looking through the door, they've completely remodeled that building. I mean, there's stairways that, that's gone. And a big gallery now where my printmaking studio used to be. It's very, uh, things change. What's this your name is my again? Son Brian. Jerry Weininger. Jerry, I'm Brian. There's a Weininger Avenue right down there in a Weininger Park. Oh, okay. My grandpa and grandma moved here in 1908. Nice. They had a house right next to the grade school, the Hammersley Library right there. Yeah. Yeah. The yep. I went to school here a while back, but yeah. uh, my dad went to school there too. My kids went to school. <laughs> wow, <laughs> we're doing memory day. Yeah. Were you guys in the same same class or? Well. What? Pretty close, 63. Yeah. yeah. The same class. That's so yeah. weird. Do you remember the story about the teacher who was teacher of the year? Yeah, Miss Perry in fourth grade. See? There we go. Yeah. yeah. What a coincidence. This guy was just walking down the sidewalk. <laughs> <laughs> He's kind of getting a history of grandparents. Oh. And it's really interesting. It, it is interesting. Yeah. interesting. I'm glad we ran into you. Yeah. Yes. I didn't move a mom until I was two days old from Salem General Hospital. Oh. <laughs> well, I'm glad you stayed. Yeah. And it was yeah. nice seeing you. Yeah, good to see you, yeah. Yeah. I wouldn't have recognized you if you were in the You wouldn't recognize me. Either. No. We're in Main Street Park in Monmouth, and I wish the structure was still here. Obviously, they've, they've torn it down. There was an old restroom, and I painted a mural on there while I was still in college. I petitioned City Hall to be able to do it. And it was just, you know, a wonderful experience. And I know my grandparents always came through here. We were so proud to know that I had done that mural. And uh, now it's it's all gone. Oh well. Very sad. Now, mom has another story about someplace near here, right? Mulkey's grocery store. Okay. I used to be across from the park. Uh, my parents would um, get their groceries there. And, um, so they would just have a charge account there. So they would just pick up groceries and then at the end of the month they would pay their bill. So my cousin from Pennsylvania came and we lived, oh, probably a mile or so from here. And so we decided we would go to the store. We didn't tell anybody. So we went to the store, we got animal cookies and nobody missed us until we uh, were gone about an hour and then we were walking down to the street to our house and here comes our moms and they go where have you guys been and we said oh we went to the grocery store and we see you got cookies and how did you pay for those we charged them <laughs> back in the day when you could do that Put it on my tab. Put it on my tab. I wanted to talk a little bit about how different my grandma was from my grandfather. Well, my my dad was um, Italian, and um, not that that had anything to do with it, but um, he he was involved in the Elks Club and in the lumber industry, and he was a very flamboyant person. And um, they called him the Dago from Dallas. So anyway, and my mom, she um, grew up basically in Monmouth. Uh, she had a little, I don't know what you call it, but she went to Tillamook um, and to work on the Navy base and that's where she met dad. There is something really special about telling family stories in the places where they happened. During World War II, my grandmother, Grandma Barbara, and my grandfather, Fred Zito, met each other right here. Fred was assigned to the blimps that were patrolling the West Coast. He walked into a little cafe on base here somewhere, 
she was a waitress, he walked right up to her and announced that he was going to marry her, and they did get married eventually. Well, at that time, they were both kind of similar because mom loved to do the jitterbug and all that kind of stuff and get away from her beginnings, which were almost Amish. And uh, so growing up, we were not allowed to wear makeup, cut our hair, go to dances, go to movies, you know, all the things that teenagers like to do. And so um, their, their marriage um, didn't end for a long time, but it finally did because of their differences. Because dad was Catholic and mom was not, which was even another issue with family. So dad came from a family of 13 kids and mom had a sister and a brother. So a um, lot of total different raising things. Yeah. Now, doing this little family history video, I've learned a lot that I just didn't really know about. And talking with mom uh, yesterday, just yesterday on the phone, to see if we could come here and talk about some stuff, I found out that Grandma Barbara was involved with something called the Friends Church. And when I was little, I always thought she just went to some other church that I never went to because she, she was just at a different church. But evidently, it wasn't necessarily really a church. It was just a gathering, gatherings maybe? at people's homes. And the religion, I'd say, is really more of a more of a philosophy rather than a structured religion. From what I've uh, done a little bit of research on, it sounds a little bit like the Quakers and a little bit like the Amish. And actually, they had a, a lot of your family originally came from Pennsylvania, and they're sort of a... Yeah, on my dad's on your, side. On your dad's though, side, okay. Which was Catholic. All right, so that's yeah, that. So I don't know that different. that had anything to do with my mom. But, yeah. Um, it was a challenge with the Catholic and the Amish, I would say, or the friends is what they called themselves. Yeah. Well, maybe she went to Tillamook, hung out, hung out at the Navy base, and did the jitterbug because she was on something like a rum springer, which is a Amish right. term. Maybe, maybe it was something like that. And we'll never know because we asked her so many times about how she ended up there, why she went there, and she didn't want to talk about it. So that's yeah. all we know. Yeah. We can just surmise that. Grandma Barbara was always one of the sweetest people that I ever knew. Very, you know, simple, very just a very nice grandma she was very involved and uh but yeah not not real forthcoming i guess about things different things yeah never talked about anything i mean we weren't even supposed to shave our legs heaven forbid mm -hmm. so <laughs> we kind of grew up is yeah. that why you never actually had your ears pierced i know you always you've always <laughs> you've always you always had clip-ons maybe you got your ears pierced since then i got my ears pierced on my 70th birthday well, good for you. I know. <laughs> Finally. <laughs> my very earliest memory includes Grandma Barbara. My parents had just come home from the hospital with my new baby brother. Suddenly, I went from the center of attention to second banana. Everybody wanted to pay attention to the new baby. Grandma, I think, picked up on this and gave me some special attention. Maybe I should have asked my parents for a horse. Okay, say that again real okay. quick. Oh, another little tidbit about the park here is, um, so Moki's grocery store was across from the park. And so back in the day, you could just let your children go to the park and play without worry. So mom told me I could work, I could be at the park and when she got done with groceries, she would come and get me. Well, she forgot me. And so after she got home and was unloading groceries, she remembered that, 
oh, I forgot her. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, she uh, did come back and get me, and of course I was safe and still playing, so I didn't even know she forgot me, which was good. Thanks for watching. In the next video, we're going to continue with more family stories from where my mom grew up in Dallas. We'll also visit Salem, Oregon, where I grew up from the fourth grade through high school. We also get to talk with my mom's Aunt Patty. She is the only living sibling of my grandfather Fred Zito, and I'm hoping to get some good stories from her. On that side of the family, the Italian side, we have a legit, if I can, if I can use that word to describe it, member of the Mafia, and someone who became a priest and met with Pope John Paul.